After centuries of deception and whitewash, the term Moor has been made synonymous with Arab, Berber, and Muslim. A simple way of determining the true meaning of the word Moor is by tracing its root word to the Greek word Moros, which means charred or blackened. Similarly, the modern Greek word Mavros, as well as the Latin word Moros, mean black. From these words we get Mauritania, which is the Greek word for the entire continent of Africa, the land of the black people. That is what they refer to it as. From this word, we get Saint Maurice, who was usually depicted by medieval European artists as a black African. The term still relates to Morocco and Mauritania, where medieval Western Europeans believed to be home to a great West African Moorish civilization. That's right. Moore has always, always been synonymous with black African. That is, up until recent decades, the real Moors, the true Moors, or the black Africans, live not only in Africa, but in Europe as well, as I am going to show you. In fact, their appearance in Europe preceded Columbus' first voyage to the New World by several centuries. This is evidenced by the countless representations of black moors, let me say, black moors, in European paintings and literature. It shows them living, working, and contributing to European society. Their contributions to European society must have been great indeed. Why else would we see these black faces adorning some of the most beautiful structures in some of the most important cities in Europe? By the way, I spent three and a half years of my life traveling around and living in Europe. I have seen these things for myself. And of course we have people that look at a video like this and they already want to deny the veracity of everything that has been stated. This image right here is a statue of St. Maurice in the Cathedral of Magdeburg, Germany. It is from 1240 AD. Like I said, they're going to want to already start denying the facts. I live there myself. I have seen many of these artifacts myself. Let's take a look at uh, this link which says Moors Heads. The Moors Heads of Europe. Save your little money, buy a ticket, go there and see it for yourself before you try to refute it. The contribution of the Moors will forever be remembered through the Moors Heads which appear all over Europe as paintings, statues, and on the official coats of arms and the flags of municipalities, religious groups, and noble families. Municipalities, religious groups, and noble families. The Europeans positively portrayed the Moors, often adorning them with crowns, pearls, and gold. When examining the portrayal and background history behind each European Moor, we gather important clues about the identity, the true identity, of the true Moors. Go to Austria. I have been to Austria. My father was a military officer. We lived in Germany for three and a half years between the school, the family outings, the American Youth Association, AYA as they called it, as well as the sports programs, both uh, football, baseball, and basketball. We always took field trips all over Europe and saw these things for ourselves. The coat of arms of Ab. Fadersbach, a small town in the southern Austrian Alps, is unique because in, the, because in the way in which the Moor is portrayed. Holding the olive branch civil, symbolizes peace, a direct contradiction to any false legend claiming these Moors were the heads of the captives or enemies. That's what they're going to want to tell you. The olive branch, which symbolizes peace. Now tell me this person is white. They can't tell you they're white, so what they do is they try to give you another explanation for why the coat of arms, a distinct, unique, and important uh, uh, historical figure, illustrates these black people. We go to Belgium. The coat of arms of Lincolnbeek features three wreathed Moors heads in a manner similar to that of a nearby town which is Lennox. These are three Moors. They are black as well. And then we have Lenick. They are black.